Konnichiwa. Today, I want to talk about the so-called intermediate plateau, which is an idea we hear about in language learning circles. But I want to really turn this idea upside down, because in some ways it's an illusion, and in other ways it can be a real phenomenon, but it's not the phenomenon that this concept leads us to believe that it is. And the reason it's misdiagnosed is essentially the way of looking at language and looking at the world that both conventional, study-oriented and modern, immersion-oriented language learning methods have. Essentially, the obsession with language learning itself is often the problem. Now, this is not to say that there cannot be intermediate problems, but there are a set of particular problems which need to be addressed in ways appropriate to your particular goals and learning style. So, first of all, let's look at the way in which the intermediate plateau is a kind of reality, but also an illusion and inevitable. The reason for it is that if we look at how second language learners learn language, as opposed to how first language learners, infants, learn language, there are certain myths that most people accept. One is that children learn language quickly and easily. They don't. They're in fact very slow language learners. It takes a child about five years to get to the point where she can hold a conversation. Not a very sophisticated conversation, just an actual conversation that really is a conversation. It takes her another five years to get to the point where she can have anything like an adult conversation. Now that isn't just because of her language skills, but it's taking her all this time to develop those language skills. An adult learner of a second language does it much, much faster. And the reason she does it much, much faster is that she has certain advantages, certain force multipliers that aren't available to the infant learner. And the main one, the most powerful one, the one that really kicks in from the beginning, is the ability to understand language concepts in abstract terms, to grasp rules and general principles and apply them, rather than intuiting them from thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of examples, which is what a small child has to do. Now, some pure Ajat people, and I don't think there are many of them around because most of them at least agree that a bit of what they call grammar is helpful, but the ones that are really dedicated and never do anything but their 10,000 sentences might think that they're doing pure childlike immersion and not using the force multiplier of abstraction. But that's not actually true, because for at least a thousand sentences, they have to use English translations. And when you do that, you can bring into play abstract concepts that you have in English. So even the worst set of abstractions, the ones that you find in Genki and elsewhere, many of which mislead you and actually lead you off the point of how the language is really structured, they still are structure of some kind, and they still speed things up to a very considerable extent over the way a child has to do it, groping hand over hand through thousands and thousands of examples. And when I say that adult learners learn faster than children and talk about a child taking five years to become conversational, that's actually underestimating the whole thing by a great deal, because language learning isn't counted in years. It isn't counted in months, it isn't counted in weeks, it's counted in hours. And the child spends far, far, far more hours in those five years on the language than even the most dedicated learner who's outside of Japan is likely to be able to spend. So, once we get past the early stages, once we have the structure in some form or other in our heads, our comparative advantage diminishes very rapidly. Getting from knowing nothing to being able to form basic sentences takes place very rapidly. Getting from being able to form basic sentences to understanding even quite complex sentences takes place relatively rapidly. But once we got past those early stages where our force multiplier is really working hard for us, things seem to slow down, but they're not actually slowing down. We might be learning a lot of vocabulary, and we've got a lot of vocabulary to learn. We might be learning all kinds of things, but they aren't as spectacular 
They don't give us the same sense of continually leaping forward as we get from the early stages where we're really picking up the basics at a cracking rate. So to this extent, the intermediate plateau is an illusion. It's not that we're not learning as much, it's not that we're not learning as quickly, it's that the obvious results of our learning are much less apparent. So it appears to have slowed down. We're thinking, gosh, I was just making progress hand over fist in the past, and now I seem to be staying in the same place for much longer. So to that extent, the intermediate plateau is an illusion. But there are some areas in which it is genuine. Now I'm going to read you from a message sent to me, and we're going to look at his problem and see how that relates to the overall problem. I've been spending the latter part of 2019 and all of 2020 immersing in Japanese, and right now I would say I'm at a point where the only problem I have when I see or hear Japanese is vocabulary, things that I've yet to encounter. And I know that this is normal, but I would like to ask for some advice regarding plateaus. I don't seem to feel like I'm making any progress at all. Every day I try to read a couple of horror stories from Kawaii Banashi and read a couple of pages of a Japanese novel, but something doesn't feel right. It's like I haven't felt any progress at all. It's the same feeling every day for a few months now. All right, now, what I would ask this person is not what the usual intermediate plateau crowd is going to think about, but these, as far as I'm concerned, are the important questions. First of all, what are your goals? What is it that you can't do now that you want to be able to do? And secondly, why are you reading these stories? Why are you reading horror stories and two pages of a novel every day? Are you reading the stories in order to learn Japanese? Or are you learning Japanese in order to read the stories? It makes a big difference. Are you reading the stories because this is what you want to be doing? Or are you reading them in order to learn Japanese? In quotes. And again, what is it that you want to be doing that you can't do right now? Is it that you want to read the stories faster? Is it that you're not understanding them properly? Is it that the vocabulary isn't sticking? Is it that you want to be able to understand spoken Japanese when you hear it and you still can't do that? Is it that you want to be able to read more abstract material? It's no good just saying, I want to learn Japanese, that's too vague. What are your actual goals? What do you want? What's the next step? What are you after? Are you enjoying what you're doing? And if not, why are you doing it? Do you want to be doing something else? And if so, what is it? One of the reasons that the so-called intermediate plateau is talked about is that we have this whole abstract concept of learning Japanese, whatever that's supposed to mean. We shouldn't move from the beginner stage to the so-called intermediate stage. We should move from the beginner stage where we can't help studying Japanese. We've actually got to look at structure and see how it works. We've actually got to look at vocabulary and get some basic vocabulary. Once we move past that stage, we shouldn't move into the next stage of learning called the intermediate stage. We should move into the stage of living Japanese. This is how people actually learn language. They learn language by using it and using it because they want to use it. So, are you happy with reading horror stories and a couple of pages of a novel? Are you just waiting for some result from doing that? And if so, what result are you expecting? Or is this not your end goal? Are you wanting to read about quantum physics? Or are you wanting to watch talks on YouTube and you can't do it yet? If it's that, you're not going to do it by just going on reading stories. Every area of Japanese is a skill in itself. If you want to read abstract material, you need to start reading some abstract material. You can't jump straight into quantum physics, but you can start reading more abstract things. You can start looking things up in Japanese, Wikipedia, etc. You've got to make steps in the direction you want to go. But in order to do that, you've got to know the direction in which you want to go. If you want to hear Japanese, you want to listen to spoken Japanese on YouTube or talk to Japanese people, Listening is a skill in itself. It actually involves a very different skill set from reading Japanese. And I've made a video about this. You need to watch it if you really want to know how to start listening to Japanese as opposed to just reading it. If you're happy with reading your novels and your stories, read your novels and your stories. The point is that you're past the stage where you're learning Japanese in the sense of 
memorizing stuff just for the sake of memorizing it. You're at the stage where you can be living Japanese and you should be enjoying it. Japanese is a journey. And if you're not enjoying the journey, you probably won't enjoy the destination, especially as there's no destination marker. There's no point to arrive and say, ah, now I've learned Japanese. And if that was your goal, why? Is it, is it like stamp collecting? You wanted another one for your album? You've got to ask yourself, what are you actually doing apart from learning Japanese? What's your aim? What's your goal? If you want to read stories, read stories. Go on reading stories, you'll get better at reading stories. If you want to do something else, you need to be moving towards those particular skills. So this whole intermediate plateau thing is a mixture of illusion and confusion. Illusion because a parent slowing down in learning the language, so-called, is inevitable. And a confusion because the ideology of language learning websites and language learning channels is language learning is an end in itself, and language learning isn't an end in itself. Language learning is a living process in which we learn to do what we want to do, what we need to do, in the language. It's a set of goals. Practicing one particular skill doesn't magically give us other skills, although it helps. So we have to break down what it is we really want to do. We have to have the will and desire to do it. If we don't really want to do it, then don't do it. If you're only doing it in order to learn Japanese, then ask yourself, why do you want to learn Japanese? What's the goal here? What's the aim? What's the end product? What do you actually want out of it? If you're enjoying what you're doing now, go on doing it. If you're not enjoying it, stop doing it. If you want to be doing other things as well, start moving towards doing those other things. Forget about the intermediate plateau. Forget about learning Japanese and move into living Japanese. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below and I will answer as usual. I'd like to thank my gold Kokeshi patrons, my producer angels, who make these videos possible, and all my patrons and supporters on Patreon and everywhere. Thank you for making this adventure possible. And thank you for making it possible for us to overturn the old hidebound ideas about learning language. Together, we are moving away from these old models that are so restrictive and into a new world of vibrant, living Japanese. Thank you so much. And thank you for attending this lesson. Kore kara mo yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Class dismissed.